Will Terrell, and welcome to this video. <laughs> this video is brought to you from my hotel room. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm sorry it's been a while, quite a while, about six weeks since I've done a video. Uh, I've got a good excuse, honestly, I promise. Um, I am working at Warner Brothers. <laughs> Uh, I've been working at Warner Brothers for about five weeks now, and uh, it's like really amazing. I'm working on uh, I'm doing character designs and prop designs for the new Bugs Bunny series, Wabbit. And um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. But I'm also living out of hotel rooms and out of my suitcase because uh, my apartment's still in Oceanside and Burbank is two hours, depending on... Depending on traffic, sometimes it's like three hours away. So, um, but I'm not complaining. It's pretty, pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, I thought this week, since it's been so long, uh, I decided I'm going to bring my equipment and try and make a video from the hotel room. So we'll see how this goes. This is like a first time for me doing a people sketching video from the hotel room. But I have a lot to say and I'm excited. <laughs> to talk about it. Um, so I'm sketching this guy that I saw on my lunch break today. Um, my friend April and I stopped, went from Warner Brothers to uh, this place called Sharky's down the street from us, and we had lunch, and I, I saw this guy look like a screenwriter with his laptop, crazy gray hair. Um, tried to catch him, but he, he got away before I could finish him out, so um, I'm going to do my best from memory. Um, another reason I've kind of been struggling with doing uh, videos lately is because I've actually been struggling with sketching lately. It's been, I mean, it's been happening for a while, but um, it's been really bad the last two or three months where I hardly do any sketching anymore because um, I've been doing... Um, basically I'm trying, changing my style, like I'm not doing, uh, I'm trying to do more structured drawings, um, so it's really taken me out of my comfort zone, and, uh, it's only been the last week or two that I'm actually, like, starting to feel comfortable with it again, with, with doing people sketching, uh, but with this new style, and, um, the what I'm trying to do is incorporate the Warner Brothers style into my people sketching uh, to make it more comfortable for me when I'm designing characters, um, and I like it because it's sort of a it's it's new. Like I'm having there are rules that I have to follow when I'm designing a character, and uh, there it it's possible for it to not look right if uh, I don't follow those rules. And it's taken a while to kind of figure out what that means. And, uh, I mean, there's there's never always... <laughs> there's never always a right and wrong. There's, you know, a million different ways to the same solution. But there's a very specific look that they're going for on the show. And um, so, doing my best trying to fit in that. But, yeah, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about... <laughs> I'm just excited. First of all, I have to thank my friend Chad Townsend, who, if you don't follow Chad, he is incredible. Like, if you ever saw Epic Mickey, the video game, he designed a lot of the props and backgrounds for that. I mean, he is amazing. Like, this guy is incredible, and uh, he's one of my friends from back in Texas, and we used to do the con comic book convention circuit. But he's doing props on this show, and uh, he put my name in. He's like, I think Will could help out if you need something. And uh, so they they gave me a test, and then I didn't hear anything for like a month. <laughs> uh, and finally I checked in. I was like, hey, do uh, you guys need any help on anything? And they were like, you know what? I'm glad you emailed because, yes, we're, we'll bring you in. And they, were, they only brought me in for one week. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I'm excited to be here. I'm going to do my best in this one week. And um, they hinted that it might be a little bit longer, like maybe a month or two. Um, but the week I got there, they were like, yeah, it's probably only going to be a week because you know we, we don't know 
how things are going right now, and uh, we don't know if you can do it, and um, so I showed up for that first week, and I was like, all right, I'm going to give it my best, and then uh, by the end of that first week, they're like, all right, we'll we'll bring you back next week, and uh, so it's been five weeks now. <laughs> it kind of feels like that whole... Uh, Dread Pirate Roberts thing, like, uh, good night, Wesley, sleep tight, I'll most likely kill you in the morning. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But I got a lot I got a lot to talk about. I mean, um, I've learned a lot about what it is to actually work in a studio, what it is to get a job in animation. Uh, a lot of, it's like the veil has been dropped, and I can finally like answer some of the questions that you guys have been asking me for a long time that I didn't feel comfortable answering because I didn't really have the solutions myself like um, for one thing I honestly didn't know what a character designer did really I didn't Um, I thought uh, I didn't know that there was a difference between a production character designer and a visual development character designer uh, like I knew that there was viz dev, I didn't knew I knew that that was its own job, but um, I'd always assumed that like a character designer establishes the look of the show and designs the characters from start to finish, and then basically they're done. Like, and I thought that that was that was it. And like and I was thinking to myself, like, how many people could have that job? You know, there's there's only so many artists in town, right? Um, but then a production character designer does something completely different. I mean, they still design characters that are needed. Uh, like, they've had me doing a lot of background characters and um, incidental characters, which are background characters. <laughs> I'm repeating myself. Um, and then uh, another part of that is also doing special poses. So you'll take, like, a main character and you'll, if they get run over by a truck, you have to draw them getting run over by a truck or... <laughs> If they're getting, they somebody puts a water hose in their mouth and their mouth gets like all blow up, blown up like that. You have to do the them drawn blown up to the extreme, and I'm like, that's my favorite part of drawing. <laughs> I didn't know that was a job. That's amazing. <laughs> like doing comic books, that was my favorite part of doing comic books. Is like taking my characters and just breaking them and squashing them and stretching them and. I didn't know that that was the character designer's job. I thought it was, I don't know what I thought, whatever. So I'm here now and I'm loving it. I I could not be happier. Uh, And I'm still week to week. I'm not an official Warner Brothers employee. I'm, I'm freelancing, Uh, but I'm doing it in house. And so I get to see and meet all these other amazing artists and talk to them and ask questions and, uh, sit in on pitches where they'll like pitch a show or, like a, a new episode and uh, it's so much fun like I I can't get enough of it this is I love it it's good stuff so <clears throat> I wanted to talk about a few things that I've learned that may help anybody else that's thinking of getting into animation or comic books or illustration or graphic design um, cause it, it kind of is relevant to all of these different careers. Um, do, 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 do. so well, the first thing I wanted to talk about is that, um, breaking in is not the same as making it, um, which you would think that getting a job would mean that you made it. You know, getting that credit, like, that first credit, like, hey, I worked at a studio, I'm done. I made it. But no, it's not even close to being the reality. The reality is that uh, just getting in is, like, the very beginning of the race. It's not the finish line. Because once you get in, then you got to keep the job. Uh, and more importantly, you have to make yourself valuable so that... Um, you get your next job. Because especially in comic books and in animation, you're only as good as, you know, your last job. And most jobs don't last very long. Uh, Like in animation, it can last anywhere from a month to a year, but it doesn't last usually more than that. It seems like 
most people in the animation business um, start a new job, start at a new studio almost every year. And um, so you're constantly moving and, and starting a new project. And it's not because, you know, it's, it's just the nature of the business. You finish a, a season on a show and sometimes it get renew, renewed, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and even when it does, sometimes you don't get picked back up or, uh, you get a better offer from another place. And so you just, you keep moving on. Uh, and in comic books are the same way. Like you'll, you'll finish a run on, you know, a four issue series and you move on to the next project or a book gets canceled or, you know, there's, there's a lot of different iterations of that. So breaking in is, I mean, yeah, you, you were, you're in the door. Now what are you going to do? <clears throat> and I was kind of prepared for this when I started um, because I'd seen, you know, a few of my friends get into the industry and uh, some of them did well and some of them didn't. Um, and I was kind of curious as to what the difference was. Uh, and it seems like the friends that did well and are still working and not only working, but thriving in the industry, uh, the difference is that they didn't just get by. Where that became, <laughs> where that hit home for me, uh, was I was, it was my first week and, um, I didn't get a lot of instruction which I've heard is pretty common, uh, not because they're testing you or anything like that, but because everybody's just busy. They're just trying to do their own job and not screw it up. Um, so yeah, I didn't get a lot of instruction and I was just trying to figure out as I went. Uh, and I felt like I was kind of getting into a rhythm like, all right, I've got, you know, I've got a couple good drawings done and turned in. Uh, and then I started to panic a little bit, like, oh, crap, I should be turning in more. <laughs> like, this is really slow. The, the the girl I work with, she does, like, ten a day. I gotta do ten a day. You know, I've only done three or something like that. And um, started to freak out a little. And so I turned in a drawing that I didn't like. And um, I knew I didn't like it. And it really bothered me. But I felt like I had to turn something in just to show that I was being productive. Um, and then I went about my business, you know, onto the next thing on the list and doing my best on it. And then, uh, I went into one of the, one of the production assistants office to talk to him and see if I can get some more projects to work on. And I noticed the drawing that I had turned in that I didn't like had been printed out and written and somebody had written a note on it saying this drawing is not funny <laughs> it needs to be funny give it to somebody else <laughs> and i was like i can make that funny <laughs> the problem was i thought i wasn't sure what my job was i thought uh i'm gonna take the thing that's on the storyboard and as a character designer you know you're supposed to take this drawing on the storyboard and then you take the character and you put them on model so it looks like they look like they are consistent with the way the character is supposed to look from seam to seam. And um, so I did that. I made it look on model, but it was boring. And it was boring in the storyboard. So uh, when I made it boring on my design, um, that was on me. And... Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have turned it in. So I, I asked him if I was like, can I please just uh, take that and uh, I'll go make it funny. I'll be right back. <laughs> and then I come back. Uh, and then I turned it in, like, the next day. Uh, and I made sure, like, I really struggled on it because it was a hard drawing to, to do. Um, you know, it was technically challenging for me, but it was also, like, just wrapping my brain out of, around trying to make this character funny looking. Um, yeah. So it took a couple of days and then I finally turned it in, but it got to the point where like it made me laugh before I turned it in. And, um, and that became my, 
new sort of rule of thumb for anything that I did is I couldn't turn it in unless it made me laugh. And every single drawing I've turned in so far has met that criteria. And I learned that from my friend Brian at Nickelodeon. When he was working as a revisionist, he said he didn't get any instruction at all. Uh, the only thing, the only way he was able to learn was he would um, look up the board after it was turned in, after it was like finished, and he'd see what they changed uh, in, in order to make it actually funny. Uh, or to fix things that he didn't know needed to be fixed, and he kind of went over it himself and, and figured out what he did wrong. Uh, so he's self-educated, and I'm finding I have to do that a lot myself, too, is uh, track down changes that were made on a drawing that I turned in, and then take notes for future reference so that whenever I turned anything else in, uh, I didn't make that same mistake. Uh, and usually it's just like making things look more like the style of the show, which I didn't, you know, it's taken a while to, like I said before, to get a feel for it. But going back to the story about turning in this drawing that I wasn't happy with and then redoing it and so on, um, the next week, I guess it was about two weeks later, um, one of the one of the guys, the guy that hired me, he pulled me into his office and he said uh, that they have been talking and they liked my stuff and they wanted to keep me around. Um, and he specifically said that that drawing that I had turned in, like he 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 mentioned it, like I <clears throat> he he specifically picked out that one drawing that I made funny and then turned back in. He said that drawing made him laugh and it made the director laugh and it made the the sh the guy that runs the show made him laugh. And he's like, "Yeah, if you keep doing drawings like that, you'll you'll be doing good." And I was like, "That's <laughs> that's the drawing. That's a good thing I grabbed that sheet off the table." <laughs> um yeah. So and that's that's your future reputation too is because uh, I know with Brian, um, people that he worked with on his first show went on to other shows and became directors or producers or line runners, and um, and they would they remembered what he did, and then they would call him up and said, "You want a job?" And that's job security. If you keep doing that with every project that you do, where you give it everything you got and and make it to your standard instead of to just getting it by. Uh, getting by with it, then um, that gives you job security. So the next thing I've <laughs> I've come to realize from about working in the animation industry uh, is <clears throat> people that work in the animation industry are somewhat oblivious to how amazing everything is. <laughs> like I'm a total fanboy. Like I freak out about just being in a building. Like this is incredible. <laughs> like. And um, you can't do that if you work in the animation industry. You just you can't freak out over how incredible everything is. Like you just can't handle it. You would explode. <laughs> like your mind would melt down if every day you were freaking out about how incredible everything is. Um, and that kind of came as a shock to me because I. I'm used to just being excited about everything. And I'm not saying that they're jaded and they're, you know, take everything for granted. Far from it. Like, they are they really appreciate and enjoy and even um, savor <laughs> the experience, experiences that they're having working in the industry. Um, but it sort of becomes where you live. You know, it's just like in the background. Um I kind of think of it like, like a fish. You know, it's in, it's amazing that a fish can breathe underwater. <laughs> like, it is absolutely incredible. But the fish is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, this is just what I do. I'm just breathing. <laughs> but what this means is that to get in, you have to fit in. Like, you have to become someone that belongs where you want to be. It was something I really struggled with the first week where I was kind of like, I had to become mindful of it. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't just be a fanboy. I had to look like I belong there. But, but also that goes further in that 
Um, I couldn't, I could not do well at this job if it wasn't already a part of me. Like, I could not possibly take the list of things you have to do well in this job and train for it. It just doesn't happen. Like, it's, it's already a part of me and it's second nature in, uh, in many ways, it's like I've been training my whole life to do this job, <laughs> to do the type of work that I'm doing now. Like I said earlier, like I, this part, like drawing characters, like getting squished and exploded is like, that's my favorite thing. But I'm, and I'm not just talking about um, art. It's like, it's dealing with people. It's dealing with stress, with obstacles, learning to communicate well in challenging situations. Um, understanding computer programs, using a Cintiq, using, you know, understanding workflow so that, like, how, you know, when you, when an editor gives you something, what do you do with it? How do you communicate with them? You know, how do you keep it going through the pipeline efficiently? And then all the drawing challenges on top of that, like, all of that was already inside of me because of all the experiences that I've had working you know, with clients, working with people, with mentoring, with teaching. Um, yeah, I mean, and now it's just like, now it's just, it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, orange, orange juice, you know, like, if you want orange juice, you have to squeeze an orange, and what comes out is what you, was already in there, you know, it's, so if you want to be an animator, if you want to be a comic book artist, or an illustrator, or businessman, or whatever, and what you want to come out when the pressure's on and you're being squeezed is what has to be already inside. I hope that makes sense. So if you want a certain career, you have to start getting all those skills that you need inside of you. So when you show up and the pressure squeezes, <laughs> that's what comes out. <laughs> That sounds so dumb. <laughs> All right. I'm like drawing in a new type of sketchbook. This is the kind of sketchbook that Jake Parker uses. And <laughs> I've ruined, like, two of these sketchbooks because I haven't been able to feel comfortable drawing in them until, like, this week. And I'm like, oh, now I'm having fun with it. <laughs> oh, Learning. I'm learning. <laughs> this guy had like the coolest like bright white pork chops <laughs> on his face. Okay. So the third thing that I've learned about working here uh, but working in animation, uh, and this one honestly saved my life <laughs> the first week because I was, I mean, I literally like first day I come in and I was shaking. Like I was like in the car, I was just like, I don't want to screw this up. Like, uh, this is finally like my chance. Like, <laughs> I mean, you guys, like I've been, uh, I just feel like, I, I've always wanted to work in animation, and it was one of those goals where I was like, I'm just, I'm not good enough at that. Like, somebody has to be really spectacularly special to work in animation and lucky and and have the right connections and all of these things. And I was like, that's just not me. That's not, you know, I don't, like, I've just always kind of written it off. And then when I finally decided that I wanted to try this and... I wanted to follow through and stick with it until I finally get hired somewhere. Um, it's been exhausting because every time I didn't get hired, it was like, oh, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I don't have what it takes. And to finally like get in, even if it's just temporary, I'm, this is freelance. I'm not officially an employee. Um, just, to be able to walk in the gate and sit down with other animators and work at an an animator's desk on a, and work on Bugs Bunny. <laughs> like, 
it's it's just yeah i mean i i can honestly say i've done this thing that i have put my mind to and it's awesome um but yeah so the third thing that i learned especially that first week that's really helped me out um it was some it was advice that my friend brian gave me he said that as soon as you realize that nobody knows what they're doing, the better off you'll be. <laughs> I was like, uh, he told me that like uh, the third or fourth day, um, and I was I was so stressed out and thinking like I am screwing everything up. I don't know. That's when I turned in that drawing that wasn't good enough. I was just trying to get it done in time. Um, yeah, I was just. So he told me that, and I started thinking about it, like, everybody doesn't know what they're doing? And then I went into work the next day, and I realized, wow, nobody does know what they're doing. In fact, a lot of the people that I'd met the first week that I was, like, really impressed with, like, oh, my God, this guy's amazing. He's got so much experience and stuff. It turned out it was their first week, too. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> it's just they had had experience. They'd worked at another studio, and they knew people already, which is very helpful. Um, yeah. And it's not that... I don't want to confuse this by saying... You know, I don't want people to think, like, nobody is competent. You know, nobody is not talented. That's not it at all. In fact, it's, like, the complete opposite. Like, most people in animation, especially at the big studios, are phenomenally talented and exceptionally skilled at what they do but um, a studio is kind of like a, a giant machine with all these huge moving parts and gears and wheels and levy levers and everything's just moving all around you and you're just kind of like this little small wheel just like like uh, squeak 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 <laughs> you're like I hope I don't get killed uh <laughs> And, yeah, there's all these gigantic, like, gears going and noises all around you. And it, and it's because, you know, you've got uh, – it's a big corporation and there's all these, like, um, you know, executive orders and, and changes. And, uh, and you're just constantly hearing rumors and, like, this might change or this is about to happen or we don't know if this is going to work or this is going to happen or – and you're just constantly hearing things, and you don't have any control over any of it. Like it's like almost every day. Like you know, I'm I'm only working week to week, but really everybody in animation is only working week to week. You never know if you're going to have a job the next day. Studios are constantly shutting down, and I think a lot of jobs are like that. Actually, <laughs> a lot of careers too. Um, so. Yeah, you're all you can do is control that one little thing in front of you, your your little gear, and then hope you don't get squished or caught up in the giant machine and crushed to death. Uh, and so you're just kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna do my thing. And then the thing that happens though is when you do finally get good at something, you get promoted. <laughs> It seems like people are always like, you know, they'll, they'll get into a job and then they do really well. And then when they finally get good at it, then suddenly, suddenly people are like, oh, that's great. You've just leveled up. Now how about this new job? And you're like, oh, okay, that sounds great. And then you go and then you're starting completely over again, <laughs> not knowing anything. You're back to being just trying to figure it out as you go. And so that doesn't mean that you're not talented or that these people aren't talented. It just means that they're learning a new thing, you know, all kinds of new things. And everybody's learning a new thing. And there are a few people that do know what they're doing, but because they're in this giant machine, they don't know what's going on half the time. So they're just doing their best trying to survive. And... Um, so all you can do is do your best and then try to make it a little bit easier for everybody else. That's the gist of what I've learned this month from my first experience in a studio. 
and uh, I'm sure I'll learn a lot more. But it's advice that can be applied anywhere. You know, if you're in school, don't just get by. Be exceptional or do your best to. And if you do have to just get by, make sure that you're contributing to other people so that they actually enjoy having you around. (laughs) So I really want to thank you guys for being patient. Um, I, I, I know it's frustrating. I get a lot of people asking when, when's the next video, you know, when are you going to do this, that, and, uh, I feel bad that, uh, it's taken so long, but I feel like, I don't know, no promises. I don't like to promise things. I like to just make it happen. Uh, And if anybody is planning to come to CTN this year, which is, I think, the weekend before uh, Thanksgiving in November, uh, I should... I I have a table, so I'll be there. I'm actually splitting a table with Sean Bryant. I don't know if you follow him. He does some really great cartoons, too. And uh, I guess that that reminds me of uh, something. He and I, he's, Sean's moving, he's out here now. Him and his wife are living in Burbank now too. Uh, and we were comparing notes on <laughs> working, getting a job. And um, one thing that came up was, um, like he and I were both worried about being a nuisance, I guess. Um so, like, when I did the test for this show, um, I didn't hear anything for, like, a month. And uh, I was thinking, like, all the worst thoughts, like, oh, my God, it sucked. They didn't like my stuff. And I didn't want to be a nuisance and call them up and ask, like, you know, what is that? Uh, and ask if... Uh, you know, if they didn't like my test or, or what what the deal was, why I didn't hear anything back. Uh, so I just kind of let it go. And I had a lot of stuff going on anyway, so it wasn't that big a deal. Um, but I'm glad that I followed up, and I didn't get any of the inks on that, did I? Anyways. Uh, but I'm glad that I followed up because <laughs> it, you know, they definitely definitely needed help and it led to this opportunity um and i've heard that i've heard that from a lot of other artists that they'll they'll do a test and then they don't hear anything back and uh they're kind of reluctant to like be annoying and be like hey uh so did you did i pass did they like what i did uh and so they just kind of let it go and that's not the. It's not what you should do at all. No, you you should follow up. Uh, I I was talking to Louis Del Carmen, who is uh, one of the story development guys at DreamWorks, and uh, he was. I was asking him how he got in for his first job, and he said that he <laughs> he would turn in a, a portfolio. He would go turn it in in person, and then make an excuse to go talk to the you know the line producer or whoever, <laughs> and get a face to face and then he would call them up and pretend like he didn't know if they got the portfolio or not. <laughs> and he said he just was annoying. He would like call them up and just stay on their radar until they finally gave him a job. And uh, he said he did that a few times before, like it stuck. Um, and I know now that I'm on the inside and I see what it's like, uh, it's not that they're, they, they don't think about you at all. Like, if you turn in a portfolio, they're not thinking about you. They're thinking about their the million meetings they've got to go to, the the, the 10,000 emails that they've got to send, the executive that they've got to, you know, conference with. And they're not thinking about the freelancer that sent in a portfolio. They're not thinking about, um, you know, this guy that, that, that got his card somehow from some, you know, offhanded meeting. They're just trying to get through the day. And 
so it, it's not like uh, they're upset with you or anything. And, and you really do need to give them a call or an email. Don't be annoying. Don't be a jerk. And in fact, like any correspondence that you do do with them, make sure it is something that leaves them with a positive um, experience. Like they actually enjoyed getting your email or they enjoyed talking to you on the phone instead of just being another um, another person just wanting something from them. Okay. So uh, this is a ad marker, chart pack, ad marker. Uh, and I like using these in this book, except for this one's all dried out. Oh, no. My wife's been in my markers. <laughs> but um, chart packs are fun. They're usually really juicy markers. And I like how they, like, soak into the page. And you can get really cool flat colors out of them. Usually. <laughs> Unless your wife uses them up. Oh, the problems of cartoonists in love. That's not too bad. So I'm doing flat colors, which is, there's no shading, no gradients, um, which is an animation technique. I like it because I'm tired. It's been a long week. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. Oh, so my last people sketching video... Uh, I was talking about living to your fullest potential. I think that was it. And uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for the encouragement and amazing feedback that I got from everybody. It was really, it meant a lot to me. So I just wanted to thank you all. I think that's it for this video. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. And... Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the ride as much as I have. <laughs> it's been pretty awesome. And it's getting better, actually. I've got some really cool stuff I'm going to talk about soon. Uh -huh. That sounded really creepy. But yeah. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a like, thumbs up, share it, and keep smiling. Keep smiling. <laughs> okay. <laughs>